Hello my students a very hearty welcome to this mind blowing platform physics wala my name is nupur sharma but i'm not a politician if you get this joke all right but if you don't get this joke you must start watching news well today the topic that we are going to cover is the first chapter of our book first flight a letter to god before starting this chapter i want to ask you a few questions do you have faith in god how much faith do you have in god do you really believe that if we are in any adverse condition if we are in any bad circumstance that god is going to get us out of there yes if you really believe it very good you're really going to love this chapter because in this chapter also we are going to read about a person who has extra large faith in god yes who is the protagonist let's see firstly we are going to have a small overview of the chapter then line by line explanation then summary we are going to discuss the word meanings and the question answers as well now who wrote this chapter a letter to god is a story written by g i fuentes gregorio lopez fuentes who was a mexican novelist poet and journalist the story here takes place in a latin american country okay so now we are going to meet the protagonist lenko yes lenko is the protagonist of the story who writes a letter to god in the letter he seeks help from the almighty as he discovers his entire crop yield has been destroyed by a devastating hailstorm so as i told you that lenko has immense faith in god he had so much faith in god that when his crops were destroyed he wrote a letter to god he seeks the help from the almighty almighty means he seeks the help from god yes is the god going to help him is he really going to get the help from almighty is the almighty going to send him money now let's find out okay now let's start with the chapter before starting the chapter you can see that lenko is writing a letter to god now why does he do that now the house the only one in the entire valley sat on the crest of a low hill okay from this height one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with the flowers that always promised a good harvest now the writer is trying to create a image in our mind where does the protagonist live the protagonist lives in an entire valley and he is alone there now his house is on the crest of a low hill it means on the top of a low hill from this height he could see the river i mean it was a beautiful house it was the only house on the top of a hill and he could see the river he could see his field his hard work which was dotted with the flowers okay dotted with the flowers means it was scattered with the flowers now which flowers is he talking about he is talking about the ripe corn that always promised a good harvest he is waiting he is waiting his harvest is ready now he is only waiting for something he is waiting for rain yeah the only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower throughout the morning lenko who knew his fields intimately had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast now as we come to know that he is only waiting for a downpour downpour means is waiting for rain or at least a shower now if we talk about the story it's quite an old time in older times the farmer only used to wait for rain the rain was the only thing that used to water the fields throughout the morning lenko who knew his fields intimately intimately means he knew his fields closely we can also say that he knew his fields thoroughly had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast because he was quite desperate he was desperate that the rain is going to come he was always you know watching the sky that yes maybe the rain will come now what happens now we are really going to get some water women the woman who was preparing supper replied yes god willing 
now we can see we can see the scene of their house okay we have you know quite we have built up an image we can see that where he used to live he used to live alone in an, in the entire valley and he could see his harvest and everything and he was waiting for rain but now now what happens he says now we are really going to get some water woman woman who is the woman here the woman is his wife he calls his wife woman woman who was preparing supper now his wife was preparing supper supper means the last meal of the day dinner she was preparing she replied yes god willing the woman the wife also believes in the power of god she says okay if the god wills it is definitely going to rain the older boys were working in the field while the smaller ones were playing near the house until the women called to them all come for dinner it was during the meal that just as lenko had predicted big drops of rain began to fall in the northeast huge mountains of clouds could be seen now what do we see here we see that they are showing that what the other people were doing the younger boys they were playing in the fields the elder boys they were working in the fields the women was preparing dinner lenko was waiting for the rain and then then what happens then happens rain yes come for dinner she says but during the meal only just as lenko had predicted lenko had already predicted lenko could see that the clouds were coming and he says yes the rain has come the rain finally came in the northeast huge mountains of clouds could be seen mountains of clou clouds could be seen it means that large clouds could be seen who were filled with water now they could be seen approaching the air was fresh and sweet now whenever it rains the first thing it brings is fresh air yes how much happy we are to see the rain because we know that it is going to bring some fresh air and it is very sweet we can feel the sweetness of the rain the man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body and when he returned he exclaimed these are and rain drops falling from the sky they are new coins the big drops are 10 cent pieces and the little ones are 5 now what happens the man has gone out he has gone out to feel the rain on his body he was so happy to feel the rain because this rain is going to help him this rain is going to feel you know water his fields so he feels the water and he also exclaims exclaims means now he cries with happiness he is so happy he runs back to his home and he says these are a rain drops falling from the sky they are new coins now he compares the big drops with money the big drops are 10 cent pieces and the little ones are 5 he's so happy he says that this is not you know rain these are not drops these are money these are 10 cent pieces and little ones are 5 10 cent pieces and 5 cent pieces was a currency that was used at that time okay in latin america and he said that this is money because this money is going to help him as he knew that the harvest is going to be you know watered when the uh, rain will come it is going to help him and with that money he can you know uh, serve his family and you know uh, fulfill his all needs now what happens with a satisfied expression he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain but suddenly a strong wind began to blow and along with the rain very large hailstones began to fall with a satisfied expression he is quite satisfied he sees he regards his field he sees his field regards means he sees his field which is covered the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain draped in a curtain of rain means it is covered like the women like the women drape themselves with the sari cover you know with them uh, themselves with the sari he is comparing that the water has covered the field but suddenly a strong wind began to blow now what happens a strong wind comes and what happens the rain brings large hailstones it was covered with hailstones hailstones means 
the small balls of snow these truly did resemble new silver coins now this is the irony he was comparing the raindrops with money and now it really started resembling the new silver coins he's comparing the white balls with silver coins because they you know appear to be silverish the boys exposing themselves to the rain ran out to collect the frozen pearls now in our childhood also whenever the hailstones used to come you know hailstorm used to come we used to go out and we used to collect the frozen pearls now frozen pearls here is the hail it's really getting bad now exclaimed the man i hope it passes quickly it did not pass quickly now lenko is really starting to get worried he's saying that it's really getting bad now okay exclaimed the man i hope it passes quickly he is hoping that it passes quickly but it did not pass quickly what happened for an hour the hail rained on the house the garden the hillside the cornfield on the whole valley for an hour the hail storm came and the hail stones were falling on all the uh, the things the house the garden and the hillside the cornfield and the whole valley was appearing that as if it is covered with salt you can see in the image it is appearing that as if it is covered with salt and now a question comes to mind and question often comes to exam that why does the writer say that the field was covered with salt and not with sugar now okay let's think whenever we put excess salt on something the dish is spoiled okay it appears to be bitter but when we put excess sugar excess sugar represents happiness it represents sweetness okay so that is why the writer uses salt and not sugar not a leaf remained on the trees the corn was totally destroyed the flowers were gone from the plants lenko's soul was filled with sadness just try to imagine the grim atmosphere just try to imagine how was lenko feeling because there was not a single leaf that remained on the trees the corn were totally destroyed nothing was left the flowers were gone from the plants there were no flowers as well lenko's soul was filled with happiness with sadness okay with sadness it means that lenko was sad from inside he was you know quite you know worried at that time because the storm had passed okay and it had destroyed everything he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons a plague of locusts would have left more than this now what does he say he says to his sons he tells his son you know a plague of locusts would have you know left more than this he was hoping that if a plague would have come it would have left something but the hailstorm left nothing locust here means locust is an insect that usually destroys the field but it leaves something but hail has left nothing the hail has left nothing this year will have will have no corn that night was a sorrowful one all our work for nothing there is no one who can help us we all are going to be hungry this year now how is lenko feeling obviously whenever something bad happens whenever the situation change whenever the circumstances are bad we lose hope and it's okay to lose hope you know it's okay to feel like this because his whole hard work was in vain now we can see that he was left with nothing the night was very sorrowful you know it was sorrowful they all were discussing with each other that what are they going to do now you know what are they going to do now their work is for nothing who is going to help them who is going to help them we are going to go hungry they are going to go hungry because they are a family of farmers farmers only hope is their harvest okay they sell their harvest they keep some harvest for themselves then they sell it in the market and with that money they survive but they do not have anything so that is why they all were very sad at night but in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house in the middle of the valley there was a single hope 
help from God. Now, how beautifully it has been explained. But in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house, it means the only house, the people who lived in that only house, there was only one hope, and that was a help from God. You know, they, you know, they were thinking that nobody is going to help them, but then they suddenly remembered, oh, the God is going to help them. Don't be so upset. Even though this seems like a total loss, remember, no one dies of hunger. Now, Lenko has heard, Lenko has heard that God doesn't keep anyone hungry. You know, God, who is God? God is our father. Like the parents cannot see their children hungry, the God can also not see his children, you know, his devotees hungry. That is why he says that although it seems like a total loss, nothing is left, but the God is going to help us all through the night. Lenko thought only of his one hope. Now he is only thinking of one hope, that is the help from God, whose eyes, as he had been instructed, as he had been instructed, see everything, even what is deep in one's conscious. Now, now a question comes to our mind, why does Lenko think of this? How is Lenko so hopeful? Now it is said that Lenko had been instructed. What he had been instructed? That God sees everything, even what is deep in one's conscience. Now Lenko had been instructed. Who instructed Lenko? Maybe his parents or maybe the priest, maybe the father of the church. You know, he believes in God. And what does the priest do? What do the parents do? Parents tell you, Beta, it doesn't happen. The God is going to help you. God cannot be bad to you. God is definitely going to help you. He sees everything. And he knows what is in our conscious. Conscious means what is deep down inside. You know, he knows everything and he's definitely going to help you. Now, this Lenko feels because he has been taught so. Lenko was an ox of a man, working like an animal in the fields, but still he knew how to write. Now, they're also praising Lenko that Lenko was an ox of a man. He worked like an ox, he worked like an animal in his fields, but still he knew how to write. Now, this is a big thing, you know. He was always busy in his fields, but still he knew how to write. The following Sunday, at daybreak, he began to write a letter which he himself would carry to town and place it in the mail. Now, what does he do? He starts writing the letter and he writes the letter on Sunday so that he can deliver it on Monday. Now, he wrote the letter and he would go to the town and he'll place it in the mail. It was nothing less than a letter to God. It was nothing less than a letter to God. What did he write? God, he wrote, if you don't help me, my family and I will go hungry this year. I need a hundred pesos in order to sow my field again and to live until the crop comes because the hail stopped. Now, this is the exact thing that he wrote in the letter. He wrote that God... If you don't help me, if you will not help me, what will happen? My family will go hungry this year. I need a hundred pesos. He demands hundred pesos from God in order to sow his field again and to live until the crop comes. Now, why does he ask hundred pesos? Hundred pesos is quite, 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 you know, quite a large amount. Why does he need the money? He needs the money to sow the field again, and he could only reap the benefits, you know, next year. So, what is he going to eat this year? Okay, how is he going to get the money? He's going to get the help from those 100 pesos only. Now he says that I need the help from you uh, until the crop comes because the hailstorm. Now he stops. He doesn't ride after hailstorm because he believes that God already knew. God already knew what has happened to his fields because he is God. Only God can send the hail, no. So he says that God already knows he wrote to God. And in the end, he wrote to God, to God on the envelope. Now he doesn't have the address of God, obviously. So he wrote to God on the envelope, put the letter inside and still troubled. He was still troubled when he was sending the letter. 
he went to the town at the post office he placed a stamp on the letter and dropped it into the mailbox now he went to the post office he placed a stamp on it because obviously we need to put a stamp if we have to send it you know anywhere so he dropped it in the mailbox now we can see that he was quite serious he was quite serious that he's going to get help from god he and he asked for 100 pesos one of the employees who was a postman and also helped at the post office went to his boss laughing heartily and showed him the letter to god obviously what happened now one of the employees one of the people you know one of the person who was working in the post office who was also a postman he uh, you know he went to his boss and he was laughing heartily laughing heartily means he was laughing you know badly he was laughing he was laughing because he could not believe that a person has wrote a letter to god he showed this letter to the postmaster never in his career as a postman had he known that address now what happened he you know never in his career he had heard that somebody wrote a letter to god and the postmaster a fat amiable fellow also broke out laughing but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on her letter on his desk commented what faith now as expected as expected the postmaster also started laughing the postmaster also started laughing the explanation the appearance of the postmaster has been shown a fat he was fat and he was an amiable fellow amiable fellow means he was a friendly fellow he says he also broke out laughing he was also laughing badly you know but almost immediately but what happened immediately he stopped laughing he got serious and he tapped the letter on his desk he you know put the letter on his desk and he commented what faith he was surprised by the faith he was laughing at first but he got serious and he said what faith oh my god what faith i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter he's wishing he's wishing that he was as faithful as the man because asking help from the god so much faith he was you know envy he was envy of this person starting up a correspondence with god so in order not to shake the writer's faith in god the postmaster came up with an idea answer the letter now what happened now the postmaster he got so serious he saw that this person this particular person has so much so much faith in god his faith should not be broken he decides that his faith should not be broken so he came up with an idea he said that we are going to answer the letter but when he opened it it was evident that to answer it he needed something more than goodwill ink and paper now before you know opening the letter when he only saw the envelope it was written to god so he wrote uh, he thought okay that he has written letter to god we are going to you know reply it but when he opened the letter he saw that the person is not only asking for a reply he's asking for money he's asking for 100 pesos that is why he said that this person needs something more than goodwill he he needs what he needs money he needs monetary help but he stuck to his resolution he asked for money from his employees he himself gave part of his salary and several friends of his were obliged to give something for an act of charity now the surprising thing happens he was such a nice person he was such a nice person that he stuck to his resolution although he had to monetarily you know help the person he said that i am going to give the money i'm going to part with my salary i'm going to give a part of my salary and he also convinced his friends that you also help him you know it is an act of charity now they also helped because it was for charity charity what do you mean by charity charity means helping poor people giving something to poor people no all the people all his friends you know they were obliged to give something because it was for you know poor people and people are quite interested in giving the money to the poor people because they think that yes we are going to get the blessings from the poor person it was impossible for him to gather together the 100 pesos obviously 100 pesos is quite a book you know quite a big amount it is equivalent to lakhs so 
uh, they were not able to get 100 pesos he was able to send it the farmer only a little more than half they were only able to gather a little more than half he put the money in an envelope and addressed to lenko and with a letter containing only a single word as a signature god now what does he do he collects the money he puts it in an envelope and he addressed it to lenko and he wrote in the end god he just put a signature and he wrote in the end god he did not write anything because he knew that lenko doesn't need any words from god he needed money from god the following sunday lenko came a bit earlier than usual to ask if there was a letter for him now what happens lenko comes the following sunday lenko was all prepared you know lenko was waiting for this opportunity he came a bit earlier than usual and he asked that if there was a letter for him he was so determined that he is going to get the letter from god that he came early it was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster experiencing the contentment of a man who has performed a good deed looked on from his office now the scene is quite funny now the postmaster the postmaster is quite content the postmaster is quite satisfied he is thinking that what a great job i have done i have helped a poor person now he is sitting in his office he is looking outside he is looking that okay lenko is going to be you know lenko is going to jump with laughter and he is going to be very happy because he is going to get money he is contented with that he is satisfied now what happens what really happens lenko showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money such was his confidence he was so confident that he didn't even show the slightest the slightest surprise he was not surprised at all just try to imagine if you get a letter from god okay you wrote a letter to god and you also got a reply how are you going to react you're going to jump with happiness obviously you're not going to even believe it but he was so confident in god he didn't even show slightest surprise such was his confidence but he became angry when he counted the money he became angry when he counted the money because it was only a little more than half it were that was not 100 pesos god could not have made a mistake nor could he have denied lenko what he had requested he was thinking in his mind oh my god how can god be wrong god, god you know he cannot make you know mistake in counting the money because he is god god is perfect he says that god is also not going to deny him you know he asked something from god and god denied him the help he, he didn't believe that immediately lenko went up to window to ask for paper and ink he asked for paper and ink because usually what happens there is an there is a counter in the post office where you can ask for paper and ink and you can uh, reply back or you can write the letter on the public writing table he started to write with much wrinkling of his brow caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas now on the public writing table what does he do you you know he raises he wrinkles his eyebrow because he is not very happy while writing the letter he is quite angry you know it takes a lot of effort to write this letter because he cannot believe that what has got done you know and he writes you know he has to make you know he has to put a lot of effort now what does he write when he finished he went to the window to buy a stamp which he licked and then affixed to the envelope with a blow of his fist he finished he went to the window he uh, you know bought a stamp and what he did he put the stamp and he you know did like this with a fist because he was so angry he was so frustrated he licked it he closed the envelope and you know it was done the moment the letter fell into the mailbox the postmaster went to open it now the postmaster the postmaster is not supposed to you know go to the uh, you know the mailbox it is the work of the uh, postman but he was so excited because he had helped lenko he could not you know contain himself and he read it what was written god of the money that i asked for god of the money that i asked for only 70 pesos reached me i asked for 100 pesos but only 70 pesos reached me send me the rest since i need it very much but don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks lenko so it's very funny you know it's full of humor you we can see the irony you know 
what happened he said that please send me the rest of the money i need it very much where are the 30 pesos where are the rest 30 pesos please send it to me but do not send it through the mail because he thinks that the post office employees are a bunch of crooks the post office employees are a bunch of thieves so the people who helped him are thieves you know that is the irony that is what they get of helping you know the postmaster was very happy that i have helped a person but how would have the postmaster felt when he read such a thing you know you can just understand the plight of postmaster now we are going to have a quick summary of this chapter okay Lenko was a poor but hard working farmer. He hoped for a good crop, but his field needed rain or at least a shower. So, Lenko was a poor person. He was very hard working, as we already know, and he hoped for a good crop. His whole crop was ready, but he, all he needed was at least a shower, at least he needed rain. But one day, a hailstorm came and destroyed his harvest totally. He was expecting, you know, a rain or a little drizzle, but what happened? Hailstorm came and it, it destroyed his harvest totally. He became very sad. He was very sad. He thought that they would go hungry the whole year unless they found someone who could help them. Now they were looking for the help and they were thinking that who is going to help them. They were quite devastated with what happened. Suddenly his heart was filled with hope. His heart was filled with hope. He had a firm faith in God. He had a firm faith in God. He was a man of God. The following Sunday, he wrote a letter to God mentioning his destroyed crop and asked him for money so that he could sow his field again. Now what he did, he wrote a letter to the God. He mentioned that my crop is destroyed because of the hailstorm. Please help me. Okay, please give me 100 pesos so that, you know, I can uh, survive my, uh, my family, you know, I can sow the field again. He went to the post office and put the letter into the post bo uh, box. Now he went to the post office and he put the letter in the post box. The postman who took the letter out of the mailbox saw the letter and showed it to the postmaster. And now, obviously, as expected, everybody started laughing when they read such a letter. Everybody in the post office had a good laugh. The postmaster and the you know postman. Now. What happened in the post office, everyone in the post office had a hearty laugh, but immediately the postmaster, now the postmaster who was a very kind person, he realized the man's predicament and unshakable faith in God. He saw that what kind of a person is, you know, this protagonist, what kind of a person is Lenko that he wrote a letter to God. He had such an unshakable faith in God. He didn't want to destroy that. He decided to help the man. He decided to help the man. He decided that I should definitely write back to this man. He discussed with his colleagues and all of them decided to part with some money for an act of charity. Now, because the postmaster was very kind-hearted and he wanted to help that poor person who had so much faith in God, that he also convinced his friends and his colleagues that they should part with their salary. They should give some money for this act of charity. You know, they collected money, but they were able to collect only a little more than half the money requested for by Lenko. The postmaster put the money in an envelope and addressed it to Lenko. Now, what happened? That they collected the money, they collected the money and they put it, you know, in the envelope and they addressed it to Lenko. And the postmaster put the money. He uh, and you know they were expecting that the Lenko that Lenko is going to be happy. The next Sunday, Lenko went to the post office. The postmaster hand, uh, handed him the letter. Lenko, Lenko was not at all surprised as we saw that Lenko is a man of God. He had so much faith in God. He did not question God's ability to write a letter to him. He thought that, yes, I asked something from God. God is definitely going to help him. Um, nobody could to question the ability of God and he was not surprised at, uh, at all. We could see that this was his faith. Now, God would reply in the form of money and he did receive it. He opened the envelope but became angry on counting the money. He opened the envelope and he became very ang angry because 30 pesos were missing. There were only 70 pesos in the envelope, whereas he had asked for 100. He knew God could not have made a mistake. 
immediately he wrote another letter to god he knew that god couldn't have made a mistake neither god you know could make a mistake in counting the money neither he could deny of what lenku asked from him so that is why he wrote an angry letter to god and the postmaster now the postmaster who was expecting you know applause who was expecting a good reply he took the letter from the mailbox and opened it lenko had requested god to send the rest of the money lenko had requested that please send me the rest of the money 30 pesos and he had received only 70 pesos obviously he wrote his disappointment he wrote that i'm quite disappointed i only got 70 pesos i asked for 100 pesos lenko had a feeling that the people at the post office had cheated him now he felt that they had cheated him by taking out some money from god's envelope so he wrote that god should not send the money through the mail as according to him the post office employees were a bunch of crooks now the irony comes you know he is expecting the 30 pesos to be sent through some other source and not the mail because he thinks that the post of his employees are going to steal it again because they are a bunch of crooks bunch of crooks means he thinks that they are a bunch of thieves so कर भला तो हो भला बट दिस डजेंट हैपन इन दिस केस यू नो द पीपल द पीपल ऑफ द पोस्ट ऑफिस दे डेंट गेट एप्रिशिएटेड बट दे वर कॉल्ड थीव्स बाय आर स्वीट एंड इनोसेंट लेंको नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ क्वेश्चन आंसर्स फ्यू क्वेश्चन आंसर्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हु वाज लेंको what was his what were his main problems लेंको वाज अ पुअर बट हार्ड वर्किंग फार्मर who was expecting a good rainfall for his crops but one day a hailstorm came and completely destroyed all his crops so this you can write that he was a poor but hard working farmer who was expecting you know a uh, good rainfall for the crops you know and he did not have any other source he didn't have you know the modern uh, uh, irrigation methods were not prevalent at that time and he was only you know waiting for the rain but hailstorm came and all his crop was destroyed what are the raindrops compared to and why raindrops are compared to new coins 10 cents and 5 cent pieces it is because they promised a good harvest and as such good money yes this is the question which often comes to exam that why the money why the raindrops are being compared with the money because then you know uh, the crop is going to be harvested when they are going to sell the crop they are going to get the money in return they are a family of farmers this is the only source of income for them so that is why they are comparing it with money that you know this is money that is falling from the sky so what were lenko's feelings when the hail storm stopped what did he feel lenko's heart was filled with sorrow as the hail had left nothing lenko's heart was filled with sorrow he was very sad he was devastated because the hail had left nothing his crops were completely destroyed he thought that his family would go hungry that year as expected as expected he was very sad he was thinking that what would happen to his family they would all, they would all go hungry because all his family was involved in you know the farming business so they didn't have anything to eat they were thinking that we are going to get hungry now bring out lenko's immense faith in god lenko expected some rain for his crop rain came and lenko became very happy but soon his happiness turned into sorrow when the rain turned into hail and ruined his crop now they are asking a very beautiful question lenko's immense faith in god as we already know that lenko had an immense faith in god he you know he had unshakable faith in god and now we are going to explain it that earlier what happened what happened with lenko was that he was expecting rain expecting rain but what happened hail storm came instead his heart was filled with sorrow but he did not lose heart he did not lose heart this is the first sign of his faith he had firm belief in god he wrote a letter to god asking him to send 100 pesos so that he could sow his field again he dropped the letter in the mail now what he did he dropped the letter in the mail he wrote a letter the postmaster read the letter addressed to god and to preserve the man's faith in god he raised 70 pesos and sent them to lenko so the postmaster being a very good man being a kind hearted person he sent 70 pesos to him Lenko was not at all surprised on receiving a letter from God now this is a second sign 
that he was not at all surprised he was not taken back you know he was quite normal okay okay god has written the letter to me it's not a big thing he had an unshakable faith that god would reply in the form of money and he did receive it he thought that yes god is going to help me i had asked for help he is going to help and he is going to send the money lenko could not believe that god had made a mistake he could not believe that god could make such a mistake he wrote again asking god to send the rest of the money but not through mail <laughs> now he wrote the letter again to the god he was expecting his you know leftover money that 30 pesos are left please send it to me but do not send it through the mail now because there are a bunch of crooks this shows his immense belief in god this also shows that how innocent he was he was hard working he worked like an ox of a man he wrote you know he knew how to write and he was quite a good person but he was also very innocent you know some people may call him foolish but i don't think so that foolish would be a kind word to use for such a sweet person like lenko we can write that lenko was also very innocent okay now i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter in the light of this statement describe lenko's character now they're asking about the lenko's character yes because the postmaster said that i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter now who had the faith in god lenko lenko what kind of a person was lenko as the as soon as the postmaster received and read the letter written by lenko to god he expressed his feelings in these words in these words he had expressed his feelings now lenko the writer of the letter was a simple farmer what kind of a person he was he was a simple farmer he had a firm belief in belief in god once when his crop was destroyed by hailstones he turned to god for help you know immediately he turned to god for help he didn't lose his heart for long he d- uh, he did lose his heart for at first but he was you know hopeful that god is definitely going to help him he wrote a letter to god believing that god would not leave them to die of hunger and starvation he believed that god is not going to you know leave them hungry when he received a packet full of money he was not the least surprised he was not at all surprised such was his faith in god such was his confidence being simple in mind now he was simple in mind and generous by soul he was also generous by soul he never knew that some generous soul had sent him the money in the name of god he was generous by heart but he didn't know that another gen- a generous person is there another generous person is there just like him who is going to help him and that generous person was our own post master now in the lesson a letter to god what moral values does the post master exhibit what moral values does the post master have what character what kind of a character he had the post master was a fat and amiable fellow now his appearance has been described he was fat but he was amiable he was very friendly he was very loving he was a sensible he was sensible and a compassionate human being who is a compassionate person compassionate person who has a lot of passion who has a lot of passion for helping others okay he was very kind he was a human being who was amazed by the depth of faith in god that is shown by elenko he could have laughed he could have laughed he would have you know kept on laughing he wouldn't have believed if he was not a good fellow he would have you know left it like this that what kind of a foolish person is this elenko okay we are not going to help him but because he was generous because he was very kind he you know tried to help elenko although at first he laughed at elenko's letter he could have you know kept on laughing but he became serious because he was deeply moved and impressed by lenko's faith in god and wanted to help lenko because he didn't want his faith to be shaken now we can see that he was quite a good observant he could observe that what kind of a faith lenko had now the postmaster himself gave a part of his salary he was not only generous by heart but he was generous you know with his salary as well and he gave a part of his salary and he even convinced his few friends to contribute for charity he felt very happy he was very happy he was very satisfied he was content 
when lenko received the money this shows that he was kind and he was empathetic person he had a lot of empathy you know he loved other people he loved other people he was such an you know he was such an amiable fellow that he decided that i should help a person like lenko you know such was the person such was our postmaster i guess the postmaster is the person who is the most loved character of the story what moral values what theme you know we get from this chapter the moral value that we get is that our faith should be so strong if we have deep faith in god the god is definitely going to help us he is definitely going to get us out of the darker times if we are in a darker time if we have you know dark circumstances god is definitely going to pull you out of that now in this case god didn't directly help him but the postmaster the postmaster was the messenger of god who helped our lenko you know i just really expect that you really you know enjoyed this chapter okay thank you so much we'll meet in the next class till then bye bye